I'm really excited for you guys to listen to this week's episode on my recent trip to Japan. On this episode, we explore the difference between Western and Eastern cultures, social norms on relationships, monogamy, sex, and the motivation behind Japanese value systems around work and family. Welcome back, everyone, to the Got Mental Health podcast. I'm your co host, Rachel Cove, along with my other co host, Martha. Martha. Martha, <laughs> Martha Mogilevsky. Martha Mogilevsky. <laughs> okay. It's Arthur Mogilevsky. Wow. Is that your last name? It took me a second. I was afraid of not pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> Do you see how complicated your last name it is? It is. I have to pause. In high school, did people ever give you a hard time for your last name? Um, no, because I, I took the m M&M approach. Which was? I made fun of myself. How did you do that? By making fun of my last name. Got your last name. Because I always, like, even now, I always go about, it's, it's, you, like, they ask, like, how do you spell your name? Like, they're writing my last name, like, if it's, like, Time Warner Cable or some crap. And I'm like, do you have enough pen in that ink? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so they start laughing at it, and they're like, okay, well, this guy's making fun of his own last name, you know? Every time I have to write your last name. I know. In something, I yeah. have to look you up on Facebook. Yeah. To make sure that yeah. I do it correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to talk to Even you. Even my first name, though. Arthur? Because there's a lot of ways of spelling it. A-R-T-H-E-R. There's A-R-T-U-R. There's just a lot of... It, it, yeah. So. We you, can unpack that another day. We can. Um, you recently just got back from Japan. I did. I want to talk about that. There's a lot to talk about. I am very fascinated by Eastern philosophy, mm -hmm. Western philosophy, mm. The different, the differences in how they approach mental health, the differences in how they approach really anything that that we do here in the United States, like yeah. they're very different than us. And right. I really, I, I'm actually very uneducated in this subject, so I I want to just talk about your experience there. Yeah, because I feel like when you got back, every person you ran into was asking you about how's, how's Japan? Japan. How's Japan? It's funny actually because I. No matter who I talk to, it's on their bucket list. To go to Japan. To go to Japan. It's, it's, uh, I've never, see, like, you know, you could talk about France or Spain. And everybody's like, oh, like, yeah, cool. Like Germany, whatever, Mexico, Cancun. But when I talked about Japan to people, either before I went or after I came back, like, light went off because I feel like there's this inherent, like, I, like, thought or idea that Japan is like completely different from what we're normally used to, right? Um and we were I was we were I was talking with with Chris, our uh our editor in chief over here, uh the other day about how no matter where you go, there is going to be some form of influence of Western influence, right? Whether it be in architecture, whether it be in food, uh in population what you know ideology structure rules whatever it is there there is some integration to what we are normally used to so you know if i go to if i go to london i i'm going to feel closer to home like going to new york or something like that when i go to london right if i go to europe last time i mean it's fairly easy to get around most people speak english most of the rules most of the laws the ways that people kind of communicate with you their demeanor their respect or lack thereof very similar to western ideology um varieties of foods this you know what i mean and so the coming to japan was a complete and utter mind flip like it was it was it, it, it i've never experienced such a culture i've never experienced such a way of living and i was only there for, we were only there for two weeks but you can get a lot in two weeks especially if you try to be like a local right like we didn't have tour guides we didn't do like we did a lot of the um uh, you know touristy things but we did a lot of exploration as well we did a lot of like eat in the middle of nowhere go out into the middle of the night like 
try to find things, talk to locals, get their ideas of where to go. So we try to live like locals as much as possible. We even half of the trip we were in an Airbnb. We weren't even in a hotel. So we had to, you know, we didn't have a car. We had to take the subway system. So we really had like lived as much as we possibly could like locals. So we really got a good feeling like it. We didn't really feel like tourists, you know, and at the same time we felt like tourists, right? Um, Were there a lot of Americans there? No, actually there weren't uh, because they just recently opened back up. So I think that had a lot to do with it. Um, everybody's still wearing masks. So both in public and in closed confined areas. So, I mean, we didn't wear masks out, outside, but you know, when you're in the subway system, when you're indoors in the malls, I mean, you're, you're pretty much wearing masks. Um, interestingly enough from, uh, the one tour that we did do, uh, the gentleman mentioned to me that the main reason, because they list, they lifted their mask mandate, and the main reason that they still wear masks is because the government supposedly plants a a tree that's very economical for the country. I'm not sure why they continue to do it, but they still plant this tree, and this tree over a five to seven year period creates respiratory issues for the for the for the um, for the people. And so they start having really difficult times breathing in and out of their nose and their mouths. Um, and so, and, and it typically starts coming out during the spring. Um, Why so would they put a tree? I don't know. I, I we didn't get that. Again, very fascinating co like country. Like there's a lot of things that they do that don't make sense to Western civilizations, but for them, that's their way of living and, and it makes complete sense to them. What was the most fascinating part of it for you? The trip or the, or that, or that particular story? The whole trip. The, the whole trip. I think it was, um, again, just being, having perspective of my, my mindset being flipped from what I'm accustomed to to something completely different. Like, you know, you're coming in with this Western ego, right? Where you're owed certain things, you can negotiate for everything. Um, you kind of get what you want at the at the drop of a hat, right? And and that's not how that works over there. Over there, it's very structured. Um, you know, just as 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 um what was the example I wanted to bring up? Um just just in in the form of like tipping there's no tipping in the country it's an insult if it's you want if you want to tip somebody they take it as an insult why because they don't they don't they and i guess in their eyes they don't want to be like their efforts it's a it's a shameful thing to receive money for something that you should normally do for someone else right it should be a part of your life and it should be part of your just that's your role as a human on this planet. So give you a perfect example, like a perfect reason to tip somebody. We we get to our Airbnb, we're, 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 we take the bullet train, we get to uh, Osaka. We gotta take a taxi to our Airbnb. Now our Airbnb is probably about 45 minutes away from the main city, so it's kind of on the outskirts, right? Uh, so we get in these taxis and we're driving, we're driving, we're circling, we're circling, can't find this Airbnb. We don't know what it is. Google Maps, Apple Maps, nobody can find it. So we get outside the taxi and we're just, we're dumbfounded. I see this random gentleman walking in the middle of the night. It's it's like 10 o'clock at night. He's walking by himself. And I ask him like, you know, and, and it's hard to communicate in Japan because they don't, they don't speak English that well. So a lot of it is either Google Translate or, you know, uh, just hand signals and just a few words here and there they pick up. So... My sister-in-law shows him on the on the Google Translate. We're trying to find this address. Can, is, is, do you know where this is? Can you point us in the right direction? The guy ends up leaving. Okay, he like walks away. He's like, uh, he like shakes his hand. He says, okay, okay, and walks away. I'm like, okay, and we're still like, again, completely lost in the middle of nowhere. Within five minutes, this guy comes back. He's like, okay, come, come, come with me. I'm like, okay. So we tell the taxi drivers like, thank you, and you know they're on their way. And he walks us, and he walks us like a mile, maybe a little bit less, but he walks us a significant amount, okay? In the middle of the night, this guy, this guy has a family probably, has other things to do. He takes us to our, our Airbnb, takes the time, walks us, and I'm like, 
that's something at least in this country like you would give give a nice gracious tip for like as a thank you like as appreciative type of thing i don't know whatever right i mean it was my first instinct the guy was like no 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 needed and he was like running the other direction to get away from the tipping uh, situation and i mean and that happened multiple times throughout our stay. Like taxis wouldn't take, like, it was funny because there was one taxi driver who was from uh, from China and he's like, I live in Japan, but I'm Chinese, so you can tip me. And, and he said that and we just started cracking up because like finally we were able to give someone a tip. Uh, but I mean, you know, something as simple as that. So, I mean, you, you know, I've been asked like several times, like, what is it that, what's the thing that stood out the most for you? I don't think there is one thing when you go to Japan. Like if you go to Paris or Spain or Cancun, like, oh, it's the beaches or like, you know, like say the food was amazing. It's like, there's so many things that are so different than what we're accustomed to that um, it's just a combination of a lot of those things. Do you feel like you knew that you had this Western, as you said, it was like this Western ego right. before going there or was it being in japan that you were able to compare who you were going in there versus when you were there does that make sense yeah no i mean it does i, I don't think i was like mentally setting myself up for like hey you're going in there and you need to humble yourself or you know you need to go in there i was actually going in with the somewhat of an impression that it's an extremely developed country they're i mean they're on the forefront for technology i mean there's a i mean i knew there's a lot of weird way things and ways of living there because of just the culture and the dynamic and where the country is right now um but i i didn't expect to come into that right like everybody's watched tokyo vice so you kind of prepare for a little bit of that the show on hbo um you know but I don't think that I came in there with the idea that um, like I'm going to get checked like and I'm going to have to humble myself like I was carrying my own trap and it, it sounds like yeah you were you, you should be right like I was carrying my trash the whole day until I was able to come home and throw it away or I was like really I was like trying to find the ra one random trash can in the middle of the subway station that some random person probably put there to throw away my trash. But to explain that to me. So and it's the cleanest country I've ever been to in my entire do they, life. Do they have trash cans in the restaurants? No, no. What does that even mean? No, that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, like, yeah, like even the Starbucks, from what I remember, like, I think the Starbucks, it, they had them, right? But that's an American company. Like, like if, if we would go to like a restaurant, like a local Japanese uh full blown like hole in the wall type of like an amazing restaurant, right? No trash cans. But like, yeah, if you go to Starbucks, I think there's like a recycling thing. So we would have like, yeah, there were times we had to find a Starbucks so we can throw away some of our trash. Like people put it in their backpacks, they take it home with them and then they throw it away there. Like part of our, we had a booklet in our Airbnb of rules. There was an entire page about throwing away trash. Like, and the, and the regulations and the laws of throwing away your trash. There were two separate, three divided bins, one for paper, one for, I mean, like they're really keen on their recycling. Do you agree with that approach? You know, <laughs> uh, I, listen, we live, we live in LA, probably one of the most dirtiest places you can live in. I mean, I, let's be honest here. You're walking down the streets, there's trash everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not a clean city. And, you know, and, and, the excuse of well it's a big metropolitan area and there's a lot of foot traffic and uh have you been to tokyo tokyo i think i think in size wise and i could be wrong but i think it's bigger than la county um i mean tokyo is ginormous it's huge there's so many provinces within the tokyo uh system um i you can eat off the floors it is that clean i, I no trash cans and I've never seen a, I didn't see one street sweeper, which was really like you ha I saw a bunch of like individual uh, people, you know, elderly people that were cleaning up the subway system. So that, I think that they have, they might have a program for 
the the retired population to help out. I mean, I, I don't know. This is an assumption. So I did see people cleaning up the streets and the subway systems like individually. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, agree with it or not. I mean, I, 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 I would, I would love to live in an environment like that. I think, yeah, maybe we should be making a better effort in taking care of where we live. Like you wouldn't, most people wouldn't take trash and throw it on the floor or take a piece of gum and throw it on the floor inside of their house, right? They would open up the trash can, they would put it away. I can't tell you how many times I'm driving down the street, people just take stuff and throw it outside their windows. It's disgusting. Like if you've driven down the freeways. Yes. And like that, they don't need those clean, those sweeper, sweeper systems because they don't do that. You know, and maybe they do, I just didn't see it, but they don't do that. That's like, they're... There is, uh, there's, there's a give and take to it, right? Because it's a very shameful uh, culture. They, a lot of shame based, where you know it's, it's completely frowned upon. Not only that, I mean, there's other things. I mean, uh, but which we can go into. But um, yeah, no, it's just fascinating. I, I think I would. I think, I think there's an additional cost to it as a human, uh, a, a human capital cost of being mindful of where you put your trash and how you organize it. Uh, but I think there's a huge benefit in it. I, I didn't feel safer or cleaner than any other place in than in Japan. What's their cr What's their crime levels like there? We so I mean, th there's a lot to dissect there, right? Because, and and I'm not an expert in this, but I mean, fr from the little that I've read and watched and all that kind of stuff, I mean, there's there's one primary, um, you know mafia quote unquote and so the yakuza right and so they have different fractions within that different families very similar it was compared to the italian uh mafia they put horses in people's beds probably the but heads of horses they eat them first so they eat horses oh that's right i saw that on yeah. your instagram yeah that that was a little disturbing uh um, that is so disturbing do they eat yeah. dogs no no i think I that's, think that's china i think that's china um and i'm not sure about that either um uh, i know for sure that china does but i'm sure there are other countries um so that was that was yeah that I mean, you know but again meat is meat right i mean if you ask me what's the difference between eating a horse and a cow i don't see the difference right i mean there are people obviously that do but um that's that's a whole separate topic um it's 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 hard it's hard to you don't see it you don't see crime you don't see crime do you see disrespect no so that is so no. interesting to me because i feel like here in los angeles it is this socially accepted thing that people in la are just assholes right and i know that when i go to the south for example i am immediately surprised by the kindness of people when i arrive in nashville they ask me how i'm doing they genuinely are present and still and care about the question that they're asking me and when i'm here in los angeles i rarely get asked anything about my life right i rarely am treated with a type of benevolence that i that i experience when i go to the south or when i go to other places and I feel like there's just this thing of, I remember I was shopping at a thrift store here one time. It's like really nice thrift store. And I went up to the cash register and I said, hey, how are you doing? And he goes, he's shocked. And he right. looks at me and he's like, are you from the South? And I said, no. And I said, why do you ask that? And he said, I, I've never had anyone here ask me how I'm doing. Wow. And I, so I'm just curious about just like the societal norms that exist there that don't exist here and just around respect right so i don't think you're going to have anybody coming up to you and asking you how you doing because is that considered personal yeah so they don't they're not very uh publicly emotionally affectionate so you don't really commonly see the people kissing or holding hands um I mean, there's a little bit of holding hands but the public affection is frowned upon Okay, um, and we get into that about you know how they stimulate their those needs, um, which again I don't I actually don't I don't agree with that 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 side of it. There is there is such a level of respect, not only to the people but to the environment and where they live, right? They they actually 
they appreciate. And I pause because I don't really, I don't, I'm not an expert in the history of the Japanese culture and how people are made to think this way in their schooling systems, right? And the way that kids are brought up. So I, I come with hesitation. This is my only my perception of it. They care where they're from. I don't know how much of that is ingrained into their minds, like as growing up as children, like you can't cross that boundary no matter what. Like, I mean, right? Like the way the kids are raised here, it's like free for all, right? There's so many, there's so many ways of raising children here. So many adaptations. You could be either a hovering parent, you could be a parent that gives your kid a bunch of freedoms. And that's where it all starts, right? Where in their culture, I think they're all generally raised the same, where it's like with within one realm of like, this is the way you should behave and this is the rules of the world right our world i think I'm, I'm making an assumption but i think that really is the case because they all behave very similarly like perfect example you're going up upstairs or escalators i've never seen such a distinct like following of people staying on one side of the stairs or the escalators at any given point in my life. Like they, it's a it's an unspoken rule that if you're not moving, you're on the left. If you're moving, you're on the right. There is no ins, ands, or buts about it. That is interesting. And I, I guess where I went in my mind there is what is motivating someone there to follow the rules? Is it the family values? Is it the if if you make a mistake or if you commit crime? what are the consequences, right? Like right. here you run a red light, you get a ticket, right? Right. You drunk drive, you go to right. jail, right? right? Is that motivating them? Or is it just this intrinsic value that, that they grow up with that you follow the rules? Right. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I think that it's a very shame based culture very shameful it's very very disrespectful to the family name you Interesting. know it, and and i'm making this assumption because of you know the culture that i, I kind of grew up in i was about in. to ask that you know it's very similar to like russian culture like you, you you know maybe not not to that extreme but there are a lot of similarities what are some of the similarities similarities between Russian culture well, and the Japanese culture? Well, just like how culture. people will judge you, how people will look at you, like your your representation in public is your representation of the family. Like there, there's a lot of similarities in that sense. Uh, a friend of mine actually told me a story, which, which is very interesting. There was an American who went to jail uh, in Japan for smuggling drugs or using drugs or whatever. And... He would wake up. He they came. He came in there. They gave him a, a a Japanese rule book when he first came in there. He doesn't know how to read Japanese. And every morning he'd wake up, and they would beat the crap out of him. They would literally come in and beat the crap out of him. As a and kid? He didn't under, no, I don't know how old he was. Oh. He was an adult, and he didn't understand. And this is they do it for everybody there. He didn't understand why. Every morning he'd wake up, they'd beat the crap out of him. And he didn't understand why until he finally got it that he wasn't making his bed. And, and his room was untidy and until he got the, like, and it was in the rule book. And so the, the, there was an interview, uh, interviewer who was asking him like, you know, what are your thoughts? He's like, I would spend a lifetime in jail in the States than 10 years or five years or a day in, in Japan. So the reason I bring that up is because I think that there is this mentality that punishment, right, is a big part of their, their how they raise their children and their culture. Um, I think knowing that if you commit certain crimes, there's egregious kind of things put in place to kind of, you know, maybe deter you from doing certain things that you would normally like here would be like, ah, eh, whatever, like, you know, I can, I can hire an attorney and can get me out of the, there's no like, there's no millions of attorneys are going to be standing in, in line to represent you to, to get you off of certain like it, it, you disrespected the culture. You deserve the punishment. Now, again, obviously there's attorneys and there's people that are fighting on both sides, whatever. But like the point is, is that it is so like fear driven and shame based that and you can tell that like you don't need to study the culture for hundreds and thousands of years to really feel that in the people. How did you feel that in the people? How did you feel that they were shame based? 
Yeah, I mean, I, so I, 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 we went out with uh, with a tour guide in the evening one time. He was kind of showing us around the the city at night, um, and you know, I asked him, I point blank, like he he was. I asked him, like, what would be the ideal place that you would want to, like, move to or live in? And he was like, uh, he mentioned um, Canada. He's like, he would, I would love to go to Canada. I've been to Canada. I love, loved it there. Uh, sorry, not Canada. Hawaii. Like, I want to move to Hawaii. Like, I love it. I love it there. I love the people, the culture. I really want to move there. Look, it was okay. You know, that makes sense. It's obviously, there's a lot of Japanese, uh, de, you know, who deflect to Hawaii or move to Hawaii. I was like, why? Why is it that the birth rate is on a downward trend here? Like, why aren't people having kids? Like, I see a, lot, a ton of relationships, but like, why is it that we hear statistically your birth rates are going down? It's like, well, because the government doesn't provide us financial ability or doesn't like help us by increasing financial minimum wages and stuff like that so that it could be affordable for us to do it. So the country or the people are pretty much doing it as a, a re revolt against the government and the system. Because I think there, if you have a ch child, they create a new system where they'll pay you like 2,500 bucks per kid, uh, which is nothing. I mean, like what, how are you gonna live? And so there's a lot of people- A month? No, one time. And so there's a lot of people that are living in apartments. There's like 16 people living in one apartment. Like, so there's a lot of that going on. Um, so again, it, it's, but if this would happen here, there would be protests, there would be marches, there would be debates, there would be all these things. They don't see that there. Their way of protesting is just not having children. And so, so we often really take that. I mean, I know I do. I take for granted the fact that I have the right to protest. I have the right to disagree. I have right. the right to have an, a different opinion and not be punished for that to some degree. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. To, uh, to, some, to degree. some degree. Well, we'll cancel culture now. Like you can't. Oh, yeah. No. It's kind of scary. Like, it is, yeah. Anyway, that's a different conversation, but... Yeah, it's interesting this because I've worked with a lot of clients who grew up with that type of family value, and there there is a lot of shame. Like they would be put on their knees and whipped, yeah, um, by branches, by tree branches, oh, yeah. uh, for for something so simple as not taking your dish to the sink, right, or getting a bad grade in school, and. And I think that there has to be that that has to contribute to why there is a huge mental health crisis in Japan. Yeah. Huge suicide rate. Huge suicide yeah. rate. And I was doing a little bit of research about it before this conversation. And they really believe that. That there isn't mental health issues that if you struggle with anything related to mental health, depression, anxiety, there's something inherently and innately wrong with you. Right. I can't imagine growing up like that. Yeah. Did you grow like did you grow up like that? And you know, with a family from Russia, was there a similarity yeah, there no around mental, that? Yeah, there's no mental health. It was just suck it up and, you know, get back in it. I mean, there's there was that that that, that is changing if you live here. In yeah. the United States. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it depends on where you live. Uh, if you live here, that cuz I guarantee you like how more than half the people that I spoke to over there, like there, there is no, they all have mental health issues and just like here, but here there's outlets, there's opportunities. It's out in the open. Now it's becoming even more and more accessible to people, right? They're not like the taxi drivers don't listen to music. Nobody listens to music there. Like when you're driving, it's dead silent all the time. Why? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that relates to mental health. But I mean, like that in itself, that it's such a simple thing that can bring somewhat joy. Like I know when I'm having a struggle, a tough day, and I'm sure you too. You turn on some music, completely. Fleetwood either, Mac. Yeah, Fleetwood Mac, whatever it is, Rammstein, flips <laughs> your 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 at least a little bit, right? It helps. There, every car we drove in, no music. I think it was out of respect for us. They didn't want to turn on like here. I'd get into an Uber, I'd hear like Armenian music, Russian music, they put it on blast. Like I, I, I have no interest in hearing this or like hip hop or whatever. They don't care whether you like it or not. They're putting it on for themselves. There, nothing. Wow, so what do you think their relationship to joy and pleasure is? So that, that goes into the dark side, Yeah. right? There's a lot of outlets from a dark underground standpoint that gives them a sense of release and relief, right? Uh, and 
so you know we 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 could we could definitely delve into that. Let's but, delve into it now. Yeah. Well, but you're talking about sex, right? And you're talking about sex workers, and you're talking about prostitution. Yeah. I mean, it's it's sex, it's sex workers, it's prostitution. Again, it's also a sense of relief, right? Because so first of all, everybody there is a workaholic. They're all workaholics, and even if they're not, they are. Right? They they have to be. Okay, so everybody works 12 to 14 hour days. There's no excuses, there's no BS, there's no I need break times, I need personal time, I need whatever the crap, right? It doesn't exist there, okay? People work their 14 hour shifts no matter what you do. And I think Chris told us yes. that y if you work at a company, if the boss works until 10, no one else can leave until right. the boss leaves? Or or if the, if the boss is, is a full-blown alcoholic and not really working, but just sitting in his office drinking and just staring at the ceiling, you still can't leave. It's a sign of respect, right? You don't leave before the boss leaves. So, you know, I mean, so again, so there's that culture. Like we would walk out in the middle of the night, just, you know, one, two o'clock in the morning. There'd be people walking in suits with suitcases, like as if they're either going to work or coming from work. It was the weirdest thing in the world. Like there's always somebody walking around there, right? Very similar to New York, but like New York, you don't really see people like dressed up like in suits and like as if they're just getting out of the office, you know, but there it, everybody's in a suit and they're all walking around with suitcases or if they're riding the train, they're all either very professionally dressed or, you know, so it's interesting also from a, from a, uh, now that, I, now that I mentioned that, from a clothing standpoint, very monotone. There is nobody that stands out. It's grays, browns, blacks, whites, it, it very monotone, very neutral colors. So essentially, there's li I'm sorry, to okay. there's literally a city, uh, Hunjuku, that, uh, not, uh, Harajuku, sorry, Harajuku. It's a city that's known for flamboyant and out of the world. It's like our Hollywood. Yeah. For that, and even when we went there, I saw maybe like three people dressed up like you know Sailor Moon or you know they had like anime or really like lavish costumes. But if I saw somebody wearing a purple jacket, it was an outlier. It was like the weirdest thing in the world. Everybody's extremely monotone colored. What about with expression? No expressions. So no affect. No zero. Same. Across so the just board. Just a flat affect. Yeah. And listen, again, I'm not, I don't want to generalize. I'm sure I saw some people laughing or whatever, you know. Predominantly 90%. Predominantly when they're walking, it's, that's it. It's either they're on their phones, okay, with uh, AirPods and just, you know, going to wherever they need to go. Again, nobody's, nobody's kissing. No, there's no making out session in public. There's no major hugging and like screaming for joy. You know, it, it, it it's, very monotone. That's it's, so interesting. So how, how did you, what did you notice were their interpersonal and their intrapersonal relationship skills? Like how did they connect with each other verbally? It, it, it's it's very, very respectful and not very colorful. That's wow. the best way I can describe it. That's a really it. good way to describe it. it. It's the best way I can describe it. It, was, it's not, it wasn't very colorful. It was very monotone. It was... Siri's trying to help Siri's us. Siri's trying to help us with color. It was extremely monotone, like everything. Um, yeah. Well, so, you know, we, we touched upon the relationship to joy and pleasure, right? right? So when we hear the word pleasure, often we think of sex, right? And I just mean anything, like, that gives them joy. Like, right. what about children? Were children, like, when you saw children there, what were, how were the they having fun? The children seemed very happy. So we went to a park second to the last day it was like a national holiday for them and we went to a park it was it was a picturesque situation i mean you had the cherry blossoms they, they finally came out to bloom the grass was like a yellowish white it was, it was literally like a painting kids were having a great time that in that moment i saw people joyful very very interesting they were joyful they were happy there was a lot of playing going around. Uh, so that that was probably the one and only time that I saw that. Uh, and I was at the park during a national holiday. And again, there was tons of kids, tons of kids, right? Uh, 
I don't think that their outlets for expression, they're not public, they're private. They do happen, obviously. Uh, it happens. The population would be at zero if it didn't happen. So there's some, there's something, there's, there's things going on there. I don't think it's necessarily um, all sexual, though. And I'll explain why. So there are bars and parlors that offer very specific outlets for um, emotional relief and exploration. Okay, so there are these things called maid bars, okay? Um, and when you go to a maid bar, it's, it's literally a bar, uh, but behind the bar, there are young ladies dressed as maids who are there to talk to you. And you go in there with the intention of having a fun, exciting conversation. So the intention of the woman dressed up as a maid is to have a conversation that's exciting for another person. Correct. Because... And they pay them to have the conversation. So, because having an exciting conversation is quite abnormal for them. Yeah, I mean, what I'm, what I didn't, what I, what I, from remembering what I did notice, some of the restaurants that we went to, they're very like, it's very quick because they're very small restaurants. They're not like restaurants here, right? So it's in and out. You, you eat, you leave. You eat, you leave. There's no sitting around for two hours. Um, the restaurants that had served alcohol, when they started drinking, they became looser louder and more vibrant like we went to a ramen place that was underground somewhere it's like the randomest place ever just where you sit on the floor with your knees legs crossed very unique and um local experience and there was a table there that i mean all of them were completely obliterated they were ordering drinks left and right and they were loud they were excited so they need that as a stimulant to express their emotions and have a good time. And, and, and again, I'm not saying that everybody, but that's what I've noticed. And so a lot of these bars, when they start serving drinks and stuff like that, what I gather is that they start getting more comfortable in having these conversations. Now, I don't know what happens or what could happen with those young ladies. And if you go to that bar, if you can either take them home or whatever, uh, I don't know any of that. But they're literally designed for you to go and have a conversation with them. There are parlors where you can go and pay for someone to hug you. Like you lay down. And snuggle? And snuggle. Aww. And they snuggle with you. So, like legitimately snuggle. Yeah, but you, you say aw, but that's sad. It is very that's sad. That's very sad. My aw is coming from a place right. of sadness. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I mean, I think it's sad. I don't know. I mean. It's very sad. It's interesting because we release oxytocin by hugging one another. Oh, yeah. And we release serotonin by making eye contact. And th like that's in I don't want to say insane because I don't want to disrespect their culture. I if I don't go a day without a hug, I'm not having a good day. <laughs> I love physical touch. Like I, I'm very affectionate and, and people need affection. The first thing that happens when we're a baby is we're put on our the on the caregiver's skin. We need that physical connection. Right. So I can't imagine how suppressed they feel, how depressed they feel, especially because I think shame is, and I've always taught this with clients, that shame is I'm bad. Guilt is I've done something bad. So if these emotional core needs are completely frowned upon, that is a shame-based culture. Oh yeah. And shame shame lives in hiding. So that's that's interesting to me that no one can stand out. Well, how could anyone stand out if they have to hide? Oh, yeah, everybody's hiding. I mean, there 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 are parlors where you can walk in and they'll uh, clean your ears with a stop it. Yeah, you, you walk in, they clean your ears for with, what with a with a Q tip. That's all they do. Just clean your ears. It's clean. It's did you ear. get your Did you get your I, ears? Clean? I wanted to. I really wanted to experience that. My wife was looking for it. It was, it was hard for us to find. Did she want I did to get, get your I did ears get, I did get uh, a, a wax, candle wax put in my ear. In your ear? Yeah. So they put a candle in oh, your ear yeah, and I've they light it that. up and it like crackles. And Does it hurt? No. I, I was afraid I was going to catch on fire, but it's a special kind of candle. And it, it came with a massage. It was like a whole thing or whatever. Uh, and is that openly 
talked about. Like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to go get us. I'm going to go snuggle. Yeah, It's someone. not like, yeah, it's not it, like these maid bars. It, it's in the ma major. It's in the main city. It's like one of the main streets in the city with like sushi restaurants and like the place that we went to where we had the ramen or whatever that was like underground and it was next to you had to sit with your legs crossed and all that stuff. It was literally in the same street. It was on the same street where those made, and you can see there's, and there's windows everywhere. So you could see like the maid standing behind the doors in the windows. And it, yeah, it's like right there. It's like, it's like you go to Amsterdam, you go to the red light district. Right. Have you ever walked the, in the red light district? I've never been to Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Right. So. I want to. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah. When, when I was there, it was li literally the red light district is like a little city within Amsterdam and there's restaurants and cafes and it's, you know. You want to walk in and have a good time? You can. So people just walk in and what do you see? Well, there's girls standing in the windows and if, whichever girl you like, you walk into her room. And that's legal. Yeah. Wow, it's so interesting. Now, so Japan, uh, prostitution is illegal, okay? But the way, that they, the way that they get around it, it's not illegal if you're in a relationship. So for the first, typically for the first half an hour or hour, they'll have a conversation with you. They'll talk with you. They'll get to know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, hey, John. <laughs> <It's been Sunday. laughs> All right. So if I know you're just, okay, okay. <laughs> Does it remind you of anything? <laughs> Maybe it does. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's they, they, they. That's how they. That's their workaround. And what? How do I phrase this? Like, so they. So for them, like a one night stand is a relationship. That's how they get a workaround. For prostitution. So, just I want to understand this. It's not prostitution, right? If someone goes in to meet with the prostitute and they develop a relationship for thirty minutes. Yeah, I mean, whatever, within a time frame, half an hour, 45, I don't know. I, I personally don't know. I didn't do that. I so. believe you. Wow. I'm just, yeah. that's, I'm just uh, pausing because I'm really trying to digest that and oh, yeah. look at this, the, the whole oh, concept yeah. around that. It's really fascinating. Oh, yeah. That's, well, because I mean, a lot of, I don't want to say men, but I will, a lot of people go to prostitutes outside of their marriage. Because there is no emotional intimacy, mm. and they they enjoy the lack of emotional intimacy. They enjoy, the, the, it's like they need to have like almost like a compartmentalized yeah, approach like, to relationship. Like, right, you're going there for a purpose, and that's the only purpose. Now they're going there to build another marriage. Yeah, right. It's like that's the that's why a lot of people act out in their marriage and go to prostitutes right. and sex workers is for that purpose. And so it's interesting and in, in how you describe it's it's almost the opposite a little bit. I need to develop an emotional right, but they, connection. But they do that not because they want it. Maybe they do it because they also want to develop an emotional connection. But at the same time, they also do it because it's a workaround for legality purposes. Did you have any conversations with people around? I did not. No, not those people. <laughs> um, around what the dating life is there like what what dating is like there what romance is like there do they still value court court courting you yeah, know i i don't know i i didn't unfortunately um uh, i have i have millions of questions yeah. that i i just couldn't find anybody that would speak english so to actually have a conversation with somebody would be nearly impossible uh and i'm not saying that nobody speaks english there but it, you got to get around with it google translate there's no other way so what do you think about that whole atmosphere? It's so fascinating to uh, me. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think it's very interesting because I don't, we don't like, I feel like we have that here. Of course we have that here. You know, but it's not like the thing to do, right? It's not like, I mean, maybe it is, but it's more like hush, hush type of thing. But like there, I feel like everybody knows about it and everybody either participates in it or, or they don't, right? Yeah, I also, and I, I could be wrong in my reading, but I also read that when you're married, it's actually very common to not be in an in a monogamous relationship there. Like it's quite it's quite common for spouses to cheat out there, and it's just like socially acceptable. Yeah, I don't know anything about that, but um, that 
That would be interesting because that goes against kind of their respect culture. Yeah. Well, I just I just read again. I could be wrong that it's it's less important to them. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of contradictory things here, right? They're right. very respectful, very, uh, it's not a shame based, you know, shame based, it is a shame based culture, but then they do, they are okay with this stuff. Well, that's like the Western culture too, or in the whole subject around sexuality is a very controversial subject because of what we say and then what we put out there. Yeah. You know, and also like in Japan, if you look at their artwork, a lot of their artwork. Oh, yeah is really beautiful, but a lot of their artwork of like naked people, it's it's actually really beautiful artwork. Yeah. And here, I think we're, we have a lot of, the, our advertisement is so overly sexualized and it's yeah. like, it's just interesting. I, I really have no point to that other than, it's just fascinating to see the, the, the differences and, um, you know, to, to try and understand their ideologies and, and how they operate just in relationship because in in groups I've I've run, I will say that uh, Hispanic culture and the Japanese and Chinese culture are the most challenging people to uh, not. I don't want to say to work with, but it takes so long to to be able to be vulnerable with them for them to be vulnerable with me and to break down their walls and self-defense mechanisms right because it's so frowned upon to just open up about anything right you don't speak about anything yeah yeah i mean the one person that did kind of speak to us you know the gentleman that wants to move to hawaii and all that other stuff i mean he had quite a bit to drink yeah before kind of getting to that level and i i honestly i mean I don't know how much of it was truthful or not, or how much of it was his sales pitch, but that's besides the point. Uh, I, I think I think that part was genuine about his relationship with the country and like where he, you know, he. One of the tour guys says the only reason he stays in Japan is because of the onsens, which is the bathhouses. So they have bath the bathhouses for them as a religion. So they go there. That's their sense of or their form of um, meditation and relaxation. I in a bathhouse, like- Like a, like a spa. I like, love that. They have those yeah. here. Here? Yeah. Yeah, they have spas here. No, no, I'm saying like they have, I'm, I'm making a declaration. Oh. They have those here. Yeah. And they're fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah we, I recently just went to the, the Wii Spa. Oh, yeah, it's the best. In Hollywood. It's yeah. Interesting. So do they, like, do they have- but you can't go to a public bathhouse if you have tattoos. <laughs> That's so, another shamed upon thing. Yeah, well, because then you're you're part of yakuza. You're part. Of, so oh. th everything there is really black and white. There's no there's no gray areas. There's no negotiations. There's no there's not none of that. Like if it is what it is, that's what it is. There's no you can't convince the person otherwise, right? This is like I'm a white male from Los Angeles who has a couple of tattoos of my daughter's footprint and like some initials. Do you really? Yeah. Where? Uh, where? What? Where's the footprint? Oh, it's on my heart. Stop it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So sweet. Yeah. So, but they wouldn't let us, they wouldn't let us go. Like, oh. We, we could not go to a public onsen. Like, we had to, we found, we had one that had private rooms, which gave us, you know, we were able to go there. So So when you were there, were you missing being in the United States? Like did you did you did you appreciate the United States more in certain ways? It's interesting. I when I when I travel, I always like, oh I can't wait to just go back home already. Yeah. Like, I'm just ready to go back. Mostly when I'm traveling within the States, I'm ready to go back. Because LA is probably the best place to live aside from maybe new york but uh within the states when i travel outside maybe mexico i'm kind of already ready to go home when it's like a relaxing kind of vacation this was a very on the go touristy try things like always on the move we'd walk like 10 miles a day type of thing yeah right so we were constantly stimulated and me and busy uh so I wouldn't say that I was like, yeah, I want to go back home, LA. I can't wait. Like I miss everything that I had there. I wanted to come back home for other reasons, you know, just my daughter and just kind of ready, ready to go back to work, kind of thing. 
Uh, so you, not, yes and no. Uh, you know, I could have stayed there longer uh, if uh, we would see other things and I would be okay with it because there's a lot, a lot to do there. There's so much to do. It's such a, it's a, such a beautiful and rich country. I mean, like aside from everything, you know, the weird things that we're talking about, but the, the, and it's all part of it, right? It's, it's a very, very beautiful country. Well, it sounds very structured. Very, very, very structured. And humans thrive in structured, in structure. And again, I think it's the balance of, well, what's, what's too much structure? What's too much control? Yeah. And there's like, there's no complaint. Like we went to Universal Studios, right? Because you'll get put yeah. into jail if you complain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, excuse me. I'd like to protest. Uh, where can I get a permit for that? Pro excuse me? Protest? Jail. 20 Seriously, years. That's probably how it feels. I don't, I don't know if that's the case. But uh, we went to Universal Studios. And this was fascinating. I didn't know they had Universal Studios Oh, yeah. There. They have Universal. They have Disney. Wow. So we didn't make it to Disney. But we went to Universal Studios, my brother and I. And this is the one time I was actually able to negotiate something, which was like a huge win. Uh, there was a line for like fast pass stuff, right? And, and, and then there's a line for the regular tickets. And the line for the regular tickets was like loops. It was miles long. Okay, and we wanted to buy a fast pass, but that window just closed. We just missed it. The last person bought the ticket, and then the guy closed it. I probably had to beg the guy for twenty minutes. I told him like, "We're from California. We came here for Universal Studios. Like, can you please blah blah blah?" And he was like so nervous and didn't want to like break the rule. And so he was struggling with it. So after like 10, 15 minutes, whatever, of like begging him, he let us through. They ran out of the fast pass. We had to get the regular pass anyways, but we were able to bypass the line. We get into the park and it's it's a Thursday, okay? It's a Thursday, I and which is the strangest thing. The park is, you know, decent size. I have never seen so many people in one area in my entire life there were so many people in this park that the line for the for for the popcorn was 45 minutes there was a loop right the reason i bring this up we got into the line for one of the we didn't ride any rides none of them zero because each ride was like four or five hour wait each ride we got into one ride line it was a Jurassic Park one. We waited two hours. I thought oh, I was going to kill somebody. I want. I. I. I was done. I just couldn't. Patiently, my patience went out the window after two hours. And there was another three hours to wait to ride it. The pe the people there. No issues. No problems. No complaining. No nothing. Standing. Just waiting. Smiling at all. Sometimes. Laughter. Sometimes. The the point that I mean, like such obedience, yeah, such like rigor, like structure, like that it is what it is, that's it. So very black and white culture. There's not a lot of gray there. I I think that's psychologically really dangerous. It, well, for it, the government, it isn't. Right. For the government, it's a great thing. For the culture, uh, yeah. I mean, they've survived so long. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, you know, and. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's 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 a very. That's what I was saying. People ask me like, "What would you like the most?" I don't think there is one thing that I like the most. I think it's just a fascinating place to visit. So. Well, I want to visit there. You have to. I will. And like the Buddhist temples there, Ugh. the the Tory gates. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and they really take. Again, it's very interesting because they kill their oceans, but they. Because they're like the high, biggest dumper of nets in the country, in the world. How does that make sense? Yeah, they, they're, they're. But they're, how does that make sense with the whole trash thing? Yeah, it's very. That, that's very, very well. You know, so most people, most fishermen dump their nets. They don't. So that's like if you, if you, I think there was a stat. You could take like all the nets underwater that are in the sea, and you can wrap the world like a hundred times. How or does that? On there actually makes sense though i don't know their it, value around trash right that's i know that's what i'm saying that's very maybe they don't consider that as trash i don't know they 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 i mean again according to my brother the fish there is phenomenal so it's a huge market of theirs there's a lot of documentaries about um their fishing and gaming um you know kind of their their, their policies and the way that they operate uh but they really abuse their water uh their ocean systems 
about it, which is fascinating to me. I really want to bring on a psychologist. Yeah, I, I, I would love to bring on somebody, either a psychologist or somebody who has lived or was from Japan and has studied the psychological effects of their culture. Because that that's, you and I, we're not experts in that. I'm talking secondhand from my experience and what we know as mental health professionals. But I really want to dive in deep as to why, because there's a lot of roots there. There's a lot of roots. It goes back generations of generations of, you know, discipline and, and order. And uh, so we should definitely have somebody on here for that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, back to the sex and love thing real, yeah. real quick. Yeah. Because they have so many people living, so they have their elderly living with them. Okay, so your mother, your father, your father-in-law, if they're elder, they're most likely living with you. And then you have your kids, if you have kids. So no loud sex. So. That's just awful. So <laughs> they have love hotels. Love hotels. So you go to the hotel, you rent the room for the night, and it is common for couples to rent out these rooms, and they have everything there for you, all the toys, jacuzzis, the beds. There's like vending machines with a bunch of other crap. If you're into like knots and ties, it's so it's a specifically designed hotel, and they're advertised hotel, love hotel, like you, you know, not like I mean. There's certain areas where they, they're centrally located. But people will go outside of their house for the night, make love, have sex, do whatever, uh, so that they can do that with in comfort rather than next to their roommates. I actually think that's kind of cool. Yeah. I think it might make a couple appreciate those nights more if it's if it's not possible because – yeah, it's like, hey, like, honey, what do you want to do for date night? Let's go to the love hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can actually see, like, the benefit of that. Um, yeah, if your parents are living with you and all that stuff, 100%. No, not just that. I just feel like whenever you remove something out of your life for long periods of time for whatever reason, and then there's then it comes back, right, you always appreciate it more. So, I don't know. It, it sounds like, that again, it's the balance of control structure it's almost like even their sex and love is structured right yeah yeah like that's interesting oh yeah i'm really interested in that me too i'm obsessed with that topic and um and also i feel like there is a re they have so much respect at the same time around that that's why i feel like there's so many rules and structure around those things yeah. it's almost like they're saying like two yeah you guys need that and we'll even provide a service Right. To encourage you guys to do that in your in your marriage because we know you need it and we know we've structured a way of life where families all live together. You have kids, you have your in-laws there, so we're going to provide that for you. Well, it's going to be really interesting to see how the government reacts over the next, uh, you know, 10 to 20 years when it comes to childbirth rates because eventually they're wiping out their entire population. Like that's what's really happening. They're just not having enough kids. And and they and they have a huge elder population that is dying off, so the government's going to be in a real interesting position. They have they have a I think we read the stats somewhere. They have a higher adoption rate of dogs than they do of childbirth rates, childbirth. So they're they're going to have to create. I think like your to your point, creating these outlets for people. I think they're going to have to even step it up even more. Well, or allow more because as a nation they're 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 dying off. Yeah. I think social media has probably contributed to that. Everybody's on their phones. I mean just like they are here, but you know, uh everybody has a phone in front of their face. But even just this idea that social media is an encouraging av an outlet for expression. Do you know what I mean? So it kind of forces yeah. them to even have this new concept of expression. Yeah, I'm, I'm so when we were there, maybe I shouldn't mention this. A little awkward. Well, you can if a, somebody that was in our party was using a dating app uh, to find local people or whatever, uh -huh. uh, and there was quite a few people there. So I on think the dating app on the dating apps. I there was the, I would I wanted to know 
what their dating scene looks like. Like how does someone date? Yeah. Like a real date. Like how do if you want to actually get into a relationship, is it only in the schools? Is it work? Like what is the what does the dating app and a dating scene look like? I'm very curious about that. But uh, while they were using the app, there were there were quite a few people that they got matched with. So wow, that yeah. is really interesting. Especially yeah. how do you get to know someone if if it's frowned upon to not open up? Like what do you talk about? Yeah, I don't know because I actually just. <laughs> I just put out a TikTok video of me making fun of myself for not knowing how to have small talk. Yeah. So yeah. that's essentially what... What is small talk? I, well, apparently oh, just, yeah. it's, hey, the weather is super sunny today. I, I would walk away immediately if you opened up the small talk <laughs> with that. Like, this person is boring. I feel like you know how to have small talk very well. Like, for me, I don't know how to date because apparently you have to date yeah. You have to have smock talk. And this is smock probably talk? smock talk. Apparently you have to, uh, well, that's my own intimacy issues, but like, I don't know how to have small talk. I literally run away from it. So what, do you, what, do you, what is small, like, you just get in and you're like, you know, what, what do you do for a living? I don't know. I, you ha I feel like there's one question you just have to have as your opener. Which is what? I don't know. What do you do for a living? I don't know. Where are you what, from? Where what, are you from? And what if what you do for a living is boring? Is you're a tax attorney. Interesting. Um, so, <laughs> so April 15th is right around the corner. Do you like that date? How do you, how do you survive through the stress of tax season? Do you believe that April 15th is a good day for taxes? No, that's when they're, I think that's when they're due. <laughs> I know, but that would be the conversation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the question you ask. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Think, I mean, think, I love you, babe. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to do any of that. Yeah, you're lucky. I'm very lucky. Very grateful. Yeah. You know, but I feel like we overthink stuff because I feel like if you don't go on a date and you're trying to just small talk with people that you know, it's very easy for you. Yeah, I, I just feel like I'm fucked on some level because I just understand human behavior so much and why people do what they do. And I, I'm like, I go to the core of like their childhood issues immediately. And then I know you and I'm like, okay, now how do we talk about the, okay, how but, do we talk about sports? How okay, do we so talk let me about ask you, Kaiser Permanente? So let me ask you something. Yeah. So what if they did that to you? What? What if they went to your core? I'd be like, do you want to marry me? <laughs> okay, but what if that's scary for them? I would understand. But what if they were given an opportunity to actually get to know who you are, it's not as scary. Yeah. So if you know who they are, or based off of your analysis of their inner child. <laughs> but they're actually still a good person. Yeah. Why does it matter? I don't know. It's all terrifying to me. So. Okay. It is. It's it's like it's a subject I'm very passionate about, but also I'm aware of my own avoidance of intimacy and also control of that and how it went into this area from Japan. I don't really know. Relationships. It's, it's relationships. About, yeah. It's, yeah. It all boils down to connection with others and how you do that. Yeah, right? and I'm also just curious because I, as much as maybe mon um, monogamy is not something that happens there often, people stay married for a long period of time out there. Well, that that, that exists in a lot of cultures outside of the, uh, of the United States. Uh, and I think that's still like Russian people. You can live in an abusive relationship. You can live in... Uh, a very a horrible relationship. Nobody gets divorced. They stay. They That's, stay. They uh, stay their whole lives. That is so sad. Yeah. They and and they convince themselves that it's okay. Like it's it happens here too. Don't get me wrong. But there is a higher. I'm just guessing that there is a I, there's a, a higher probability that people will get divorced here and get out of an abusive relationship, which is great, uh, than in a lot of uh, other countries in the world. Uh, I'm speaking just for for Russian culture. I can name half of the elder relationships that I know of, they should all be divorced, but they're not. And they stick it out. So I think that there, there's a lot of driving factors to that. I think obviously it's fear of the unknown and the fear of being alone and trying to find fend for yourself. So, you know, I think at a certain point people have to realize that, okay, maybe being alone and being fearful and living in that darkness is less scary than living in the darkness that I'm in right now. Right. And that's the breaking point. But I don't think like Japanese cult. They, I don't know what their divorce rates, and this is an assumption. But I, if I base off of culturally who they are and how they're raised and the way that they 
I think they stay together forever. Small talk. Just took a deep, just took a deep breath there. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> For reflecting. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's just very, it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would really love to get a psychologist on here who specializes. We, should, we absolutely should. Yeah, it's it, a it's a culture I have I've never really seen this 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 much of. Like I've seen it some bits of it, like within my culture, like but not like this. I know, and there's something I want to say, and I don't know if well I'm allowed to say it in here, so we'll scratch it if I'm not allowed to say it. Right. But I also feel like a lot of people gravitate towards porn. Right where the porn stars are Japanese or Chinese. And I'm just like, it's like this so curious there, thing. Right, so there are trains, there are train carts that are specifically for women because of the sexual abuse. There's what? There are there are cars within a train, uh -huh. you know, like a train car. Like a train. Yeah, the train and the, each, the train has cars. Okay, right. Car one, car two, right, right, right within right. the train. There are cars specifically for women, uh -huh. only women. Oh. Because of the groping and sexual, you know, misconduct between men and women uh, in those jam-packed cars. Uh, and that's a really big porno. Like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of porn concentrated around that. Uh, so you're right. I'm saying the, 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 it came from somewhere. It's a real thing. Buses, the same shit. Oh, it's so interesting to me. Yeah, no, it, it's, um, yeah, very, very, very fascinating. Well, they're pro probably because <clears throat> Japanese women are probably quite mysterious. If everything is hidden, yeah. I don't really know this person, right? So they're, that's probably a driving motivation for why they're so interesting I, yeah i i gather that a lot of most japanese women are submissive yeah right that makes sense so i think that's why men feel that they can dominate right but then a lot of men go to like, and it's not like there's like you know the me too movement that didn't happen in fucking japan like there's no there's no outlets for women to express themselves, which I well, I hate. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. But th that's really that's their culture. Like here, you have outlets. You have you can file a report, you can call the police, you can go on social media. You, there's so many ways. They don't do that there. Like if that happens to them, like there needs to be a ma like there needs to be a massive shift. And what are they gonna do? They're just gonna s create a separate car for women. That's it. Like it's not like the culture is gonna change. They'll just minor things here and there it's, it's extremely fascinating i we definitely need to bring on the professionals to talk about this because mm -hmm. yeah there's the women there are from what i gather very submissive that's so interesting and yet i think a lot of people to the other degree like a lot of very successful people crave to like i was thinking of billions right paul giamatti's character yeah. He craves to be dominated. Right. And so there's like that interesting balance. Because didn't you say in Japan there are people that go there to. Yeah. There, there's like there's like parlors where they go and they tie you up with ropes and, and they whip you. Yeah. Yeah. That's very. And is and it. And that's a release for men. Them. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't. I would want to ask that. I saw a video of it. So I don't know. Yeah. I'd be curious to know. Is it men going there? Is it women going there? So the person in the video was a woman. Shut up. Yeah. The woman was being whipped? Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. And, right. and the one whipping was a woman. Oh, interesting. And there was a guy standing there watching. watching. Yeah. He's like the bodyguard or some, some crap. Oh, he's the bodyguard. He works there. He's not watching for pleasure. No, he works there. And it's like a, it's not like an underground thing. Like <laughs> It's not. I mean, no, it's just, the woman in the video literally just walked into the store or the place. See, that's interesting to me. Uh, the, tell that me. is so fascinating to me. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, on one that exists here, by the way, but it's underground. It's underground. Yeah. So it's like uh, on one level, they're promoting don't show anything. Everything's private, and they're saying, yeah. "But we know you have these needs." Yeah. So, you know, like you're gonna go get your morning cup of Starbucks. Yeah. Go and get your morning whip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With an extra topping of whip. Yeah, and be chained up. And yeah. then go home and be a parent. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. It, 
I, I really. I think there's a listen. I think there's a lot of. To, there's also a lot of shame about sex in the states. In here. Yeah. Oh. And I like mean, what should be done or what shouldn't be done. I know it's a huge problem. Yeah. Even ta- like this is. And that's why I love that we're talking about it because. As a woman talking about it, I still am like, is this okay? And I know men feel that too. Right. Especially in today's times. Right. Well, yeah, you because everybody has to be walking on tippy toes. Uh, which is again, I don't agree with that. I agree with the inherently like proper education and understanding and and I think also giving outlets for people because it's interesting. If you look at like Roman times or this the the rule the rule of the Spaniards or you know, back in the day. The shit that they did sexually, they would all be put to jail or hung for like crap that they did, right? And based off of our, and I'm not saying condoning what they did was right, but that that was that was human life, right? Let's just let's just take all the crap and the noise out of it. That's how people lived, right? So it existed thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, whatever it is, right? It existed, and then we created. You know, religion became more popular, and the way that people should act and not act, and these, uh, the, you know, the the essence of marriage, all of that started growing, of course, because of religion. Religion was pushing what what it pushes, and so it conformed humanity into this obedient type of individual. And an ideal person, a man marries a woman, a woman marries a man. You have children. They marry men or women, and that's it. And you have babies, and you have a white picket fence and a nice house. Okay, whatever, right? That 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 that's what the religious cults want you to believe in. Catholicism, right? Yeah, I'm actually reading this book right now, the impact of Catholicism on sex. Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, but no, some men want to be with other men. Some men want to be with women. Some women want to be with women. Some like you know some men want to be with multiple women and some men right so there's no rule to like that's why the argument of monogamy or polyamory like it, there's this constant swing back and forth but like back in the day it was normal right and a lot of stuff which i don't agree with and i think you should put people in jail for, for these days it was normal back then that's the reality Right, I don't even want to bring it up, but it, very dark stuff. But that was normal for them when they lived. That they didn't get put in jail. They weren't shamed. That's how they lived, and so that culture over time has translated into the culture we live in now. And I feel like it's breaking because people are like, you know what? Screw this. Like, I really want to be who I really am, and I want to explore that. And I don't want any rules and laws holding me back from that. You know, religious laws and rules. So. I don't know where I I went on a tangent. I love this conversation. But like, I think that the outlets that are being given publicly in in Japan or whatever, I think it's, if they would be massively accepted here as well, if they, if there wasn't such a public shame around sex and how you receive your form of release. Well, I think that would be wonderful and i think it would make the porn industry profit less if it wasn't such a taboo taboo yeah. i mean yes and no i don't know maybe maybe well i think a lot of the reason why porn is so popular is because yeah it's shamed upon 100%. and there's such a intoxicating release around i'm doing something bad, bad. i'm yeah. gonna hide you know there's 100%. a huge dopamine hit around that 100 percent um, so yeah, I, 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 I think looking at all angles of it, it's just really fascinating. I really, after hearing you talk about it, I just really appreciate that that's just so socially acceptable. Like I'm going to go to the love house. Yeah. I, again, I don't know how socially acceptable it is. I saw it everywhere and it was pretty like, I don't, I'm not Japanese. I don't live in the Japanese culture. So I don't know whether they think it's shameful or not. They can't have it everywhere. If it's not in some level, yeah, accepted. I mean, I, yeah, exactly. So I, I'm, this is all based off of an assumption as a tourist. Okay, so I do want to stipulate that, uh, but it's, it's in a lot of places. 
There's a lot of massage parlors. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of it. I mean, if you go to Thailand, everybody's a massage parlor or a sex worker or something. I mean, it, it's, I, and, and again, I'm not condoning certain things, obviously, uh, by any means, but I find it just, again, very fascinating and interesting that the outlets that people are given openly in this culture uh, as a sense of relief and release. It's kind of, it's also very similar to like if they decriminalize drugs, or would there be so much drugs? Like if they decriminalize prostitution, if they. I don't know if the number, yeah, I don't know if the, the number of drugs would go down or the people who would be distributing them would change, right? So maybe they would not be distributed by the, the cartels, but they'll be distributed by our local cartel, you know, the pharmaceutical companies, right? So it's like, you know, marijuana became legal and then all of a sudden you have all these big cor corporations building out factories and, and malls and shopping centers for wheat and millions of products and all this stuff. So it's like, okay, that's fine. We didn't have less weed. We now have more weed and much different weed. You know what I mean? So I think it's the same thing. If you legalize prostitution, I don't think prostitution will go away or I think there'll be more of it. I think there would just be less... There would be less shame behind it. There would be less, and that's and that's the interesting thing, right? Because then you got to dive in deeper. It's like, how much stimulation are you getting from it because it is illegal, compared to the fact that if it was legalized and it's you just like going to a Seven Eleven. Right. There's no rush. There's no rush anymore. Yeah. If you could just, yeah, I'll just order it and whatever. It's okay. My wife's not gonna be. I'm not gonna hide from my wife or my husband. I'm not going to have to worry about my neighbors knowing. I'm not going to worry about my job knowing. Like, yeah, all right. It's literally buying a snack from the store. Yeah, there's like, like how much stimulation are you going to get from it at that point? Right. There's there's almost like so much adrenaline rush from the forbidden fruit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Which is ugh, so interesting. So that's what I'm saying. So I think that there still might be a shame factor in Japan with it, even though that it does exist. Right, because it's not like a Seven Eleven convenience store. Like they're there; it's openly there, but it's not like on every corner there's a maid shop, a maid bar. You know, there's like one or several couple of streets within a major metropolitan area that have it. Right, so it's still there's still some like finessing there. These it's still prostitution is still illegal in the in the country. Right, they just found a workaround. You know, so. So anyway, I don't, I don't know. That's a whole that's a whole different conversation. It's so interesting <laughs> to me that prostitution is illegal, but porn is legal. Is legal. Yeah. I yeah. I I I I don't get it. It actually is I'm not saying one is bad or the other is bad. Like I just it's so interesting to me. I'm curious how that even yeah. works. Well, there's a lot of contradictory things that happen in this world. Yeah. Like, like you can go buy a bottle of booze legally right with no problem that has a higher rate of death and than any other substance that's out there or cigarettes or cigarettes well like we talked about this last week with david it's like half the chemicals that are sold in grocery stores and food kill, kill you faster than heroin but nobody talks about it <laughs> because people overdose over heroin it's instant. It could be instant. Whereas well, with food, it's not instant. It takes time. So it's not as detrimental to the immediate, you know. Well, actually, I disagree with you. I think people talk about it all the time. And I think that's what's scary is it's being talked about a lot. It's just that nothing seems to change around those no, things. That, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Like talk like by the, the by the people who should be changing it. Right. There's not a talk about it. They're suppressing it. And it there's a lot of contradictory things. Like, yeah, I agree with you. There's a huge porn. There's porn conventions I I where you can go and, and have your favorite porn star who you've ejaculated to multiple times sign a T-shirt for you. But, like, the woman trying to feed three kids can be put in jail because she's working on the, on the street. And prostituting. I, and again, I'm not. I'm not an expert in prostitution or anything that has to do with this entire industry. But I mean, I, I, I what I am saying is that there's a contradiction here. There, there is it, such a. It contradiction. doesn't like it. It doesn't add up. Like one doesn't add up to the other. Why? Because this this individual person is on a screen, and they maybe have been tested for AIDS or HIV or sexual transmitted diseases. They have a license. Maybe I don't know. Like what makes what's the difference? I really don't know what the difference is. Yeah, I, I don't know what the difference is. So, yeah, I agree.
Well, uh, thank you everyone who has listened and appreciate you, Rachel, uh, my co-host and partner in crime on uh, this wonderful conversation and topic. Uh, please rate, review, like, comment wherever and however you listen to podcasts or video casts uh, and tune in next week for our next episode. Thank you guys very much. Thanks, guys.